Hello guys, my name is Mitch Trun and welcome to my video channel and my website at www.brewing-academy.com The place where brewing grows, where you will find heaps of good stuff about brewing, equipment, rig and tools operation, well control equipment and principles explanations. Today I'd like to present you an anatomy review of structural components inside a positive displacement motor. As many of you have known of, there are two types of drilling butt motor in the industry. One is turbine motor, which we don't get to see much anymore nowadays, hence we're not going to discuss it. And another type is the PDM butt motor, which is widely used in the drilling industry and is our focus today. PDM stands for Positive Displacement Motor. The name tells the exact working mechanism of the motor, which is by mud displacement. Mud flows through tiny space between the rotor and the stator of the power section of the motor and rotates the rotor, which in turn rotates the bit to drill holes. This photo here shows you how a PDM motor looks like in reality. From top down direction, you see the top sub, and then comes the power section, then comes the bent housing, or another name is adjustable pickup sub. It is worth noting that this adjustable bend housing is optional. In some application, it is in place with a certain bend angle setting. In some application, it is set straight or even omitted. Next is the bearing housing assembly. And finally is the drive stop with the bit box at the very end. Of course, the bit is connected to the bit box of the drive stop. The top stop, as the name indicates, is, is located at the topmost position of the mud motor. It is simple a metal dump sub to provide a connection from the motor to another BHA component above it. Besides that, it provides an accommodation for float valve. Here comes the power section of the mud motor, which is the heart of the motor, and it produces torque, power, and speed. It's comprised of a rotor and a stator. The rotor is situated on top of the whole drive train. It has sinuous ribs spirally machined out of a cylindrical feet as one piece of metal. These sinuous and spiral ribs run from one end to the other end of the rotor. They form the lobe configuration and stage length of the rotor. Stage length of a rotor is a length measured along the axis of the tube where the lobe starts and finishes off one spiral lap on the rotor tip. Situated at top of the rotor is the RCD, which stands for Rotor Catching Device. In case of rotor stator bonding system failure, causing the rotor to disengage or twist off of the rotor, this RCD will stop the rotor from falling and still retain it within the stator housing. The rotor is fitted into the stator, which consists of the metal housing, the bonding system, and the elastomer. The elastomer is made out of one piece of rubber, having recesses matching with the contour of the sinuous spiral lobes on the rotor. And of course, the bonding system is to keep the stator rubber attached to the stator metal housing. The lobes of the rotor and recesses of the stator is called rotor stator lobe configuration. In this example here, we see the rotor has five lobes. One, two, three, four, and five. And this is in the number five of the fraction here. And the number 6 is the number of the recesses of the stator. And the lobe configuration and the stage length determine the torque, the power and the speed of a motor. The fitting of the rotor into stator is extremely critical for a motor. It affects the durability, reliability and performance of the motor. It is sharp. Technicians carry out the work with special tools and equipment under stringent supervision of QA QC department and the measurements have to be within a range of tight tolerance. The rubber part of the stator is a one-piece machine elastomer and it plays a key role in the performance of the motor. There are two technologies used in the fabrication process of this elastomer. One is standard elastomer technology that has steel stator housing. This is the steel stator housing at a fixed even thickness and elastomer itself varies in thickness. Over here is thick and over here is thin. And it, ver it follows the exact, the exact contour of the rotor. This standard is briefly known as even thickness metal, uneven thickness rubber. The more sophisticated technology is called even thickness elastomer. 
It has uneven metal housing following the exact contour of the rotor. This is the metal part. And you see the thickness varies here over, over here is very thick and here is thin and it follows the contour of the rotor lobe configuration. Wow, the external outside diameter is fixed at one diameter. And not only is that complex, the rubber now has identical thickness all around while following the contour of the rotor. So this is the rubber part, which is the elastomer. You see the thickness is all identical around the contour, following the contour of the rotor. So this technology is well known as uneven metal thickness and even thickness rubber. This development has greater durability in terms of temperature handling. Also will it produce more torque and power in comparison with standard technology for the same size and load configuration motors. Right below the rotor is the flexible shaft or drive shaft. It has one end connected to the bottom of the rotor and the other end connected to the drive shaft. It connects the rotor to the drive sub and transmits rotor rotation to the drive sub. The flexible shaft runs through the bearings which are lubricated by mud. These bearings are contained in a bearing housing and they are comprised of an upper and lower radial bearings and an axial bearing. The bearings provide support and centralization for axial load and side loading. Some bearing housing assemblies have stabilized stabilizers on the external housing and some are chest link. This feature depends on the directional rolling application requirement. This picture here shows the radial bearings at the upper position. Here is upper position and here is the lower position of, of, of radial bearings. And this picture here is, is the actual bearing. Another important part is the adjustable kickoff stop or adjustable bent housing. This is the place a motor is bent with an angle setting. It has two rings, the upper, upper rings and the lower ring. Each ring has a band of angle values. This is the band of angle values on the upper ring. And this is another band of angle values on the lower ring. Usually, a motor is shipped to the rig with a preset angle from the shop. This angle is adjustable at the field prior to running the motor downhill. How to set a bend angle for a motor? There are many steps and quite a tricky work to carry out. Basically, what we do is to align an angle number on the upper ring to the same angle found on the lower ring. This matching angle figure is the bend of the motor. In this example here, the value 2.89 on the upper ring is aligned with the same figure 2.89 on the lower ring and they together the, the matching forms the effective band angle of the motor. The band angle decides the build up rate of the motor. How much the band angle to be set depends on the requirement for the build up rate of the particular direction of really work. So that's all basically covering the major components of a PDM mud motor. Hope you guys did enjoy it and get some useful information out of the video. Any questions or comments about this session, please call it, direct them to my personal email address at rich.crime01 at yahoo.com.hg. The directional ruling operation with PDM motor will be addressed in another separate session. Look out for it. If you wish to explore more about upstream ruling technical perspective, there are plenty of other posts available at www.ruling-academy.com. Check it out and enjoy. Have a good one and see you soon in next posts and videos. Bye.